I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. No single space project in this period will be more impressive to mankind or more important for the long-range exploration of space, and none will be so difficult or expensive to accomplish. place uh, as I have today to welcome three uh, iconic figures, three genuine American heroes, uh, to have uh, Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins, and Buzz Aldrin uh, here beside me uh, is uh, just wonderful. And you know, I think that uh, all of us recall uh, the moment in which mankind finally was untethered from this planet and was able to explore the stars, uh, the moment in which uh, we had one of our own step on the moon and, and leave that imprint uh, that is, is there to this day. And it's because of the heroism, the uh, calm under pressure, uh, the grace uh, with which uh, these three gentlemen operated, but also the entire uh, NASA family. The first to arrive at this place was an 18-year-old American GI by the name of Hugh Carey, who later became governor of New York State. And he said when they arrived, what they discovered, lying at their feet, was thousands and thousands and thousands of dead bodies. And come to find out, 25,000 of the 40,000 slaves at this place perished at the hands 
of the Nazis. Well, you know, immediately after the war, the U.S. and the Allies created the Nuremberg Trials, at which time we brought the Nazis to justice for their crimes against humanity. But 1,500 of the top Nazis never went to trial. They were smuggled into the United States by the U.S. military in, uh, under a program called Operation Paperclip, smuggled in through Boston and West Palm Beach, Florida. And Werner von Braun and his rocket team, 100 of them, along with 100 copies of the V-2 rocket, were sent to Huntsville, Alabama, where von Braun became the first director of NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center. What's interesting is the other 1,400 Nazis, who were they? Well, some of them were brought to the United States to work for the CIA. Others were brought to the United States to do the LSD drug experiments and the MK Ultra Mind experiments during the 1960s where people were jumping, jumping out of windows. Some of the uh, Nazi scientists that in Germany had been taking Jews and putting them in freezing temperatures to see how the body would react to that were sent to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio and were put in charge of the U.S. military flight medicine program. And so when you uh, take 1,500 of the top Nazi scientists and essentially seed the military industrial complex. The question I have is, do they bring with them an ideological contamination?